Chapter 7 The Bear Lady <clears throat> On the other side of the island, there lived a tiny old lady. She had trouble with her eyes and had to wear very big glasses. She didn't care much about fashion and always wore black dresses. But the forest bears loved her. They did not care how she looked. Even so, she was lonely and she wished she had a friend to talk to. Crash! Boom! Kaboom! Thud! When she looked out her window, she saw that a flying snow machine had landed in her yard. Oh my! cried the tiny woman. They need help. We ran out of gas, shouted Grandpa as he helped Mimi and Riley unbuckle their seatbelts. Are you hurt? She asked, come inside to warm up. Once inside, Mimi was surprised to see a cozy and charming cottage. A fire blazed in the stone fireplace. She held her hands out to warm them up. You must be the bear lady. I've heard about all about you. Oh, indeed I am, admitted the tiny lady. She handed Grandpa a can of gas. You must have lived here for many, many years, said Mimi. Did you ever meet a trapper named Benjamin Jones? She continued on. I saw an interesting display about him at the History Museum in town. Both ladies sat down in two soft chairs. Mimi smiled and looked around. She noticed many fuzzy teddy bears in that cottage, all sizes, shapes, and colors. They were hidden in corners and put on bookshelves. Yes, admitted the little woman. Old Ben was my neighbor when I was a child, a kinder man you'd never meet. He never left his cabin without his raccoon cap. And she went on, you know, there is no doctor here. So Ben made medicine from plants. I got better fast whenever I was sick. Oh, that's very interesting, Mimi noted. I wish he was still here. Grandpa filled the tank and thanked the bear lady. Before they left, she gave Mimi a little white bear with red mittens. Please take this with you as a friendship gift. I collect them and make little mittens for them. Oh, I love this one. Mimi gave the tiny woman a great big hug. Thank you. They buckled up and the new friends promised to visit again soon. Just as they took off, the tiny, tiny woman yelled, Oh, I almost forgot. She took a deep breath. Old Benjamin loved this island and he promised to come back someday soon. And there's the flying snow machine. Wouldn't that be fun to ride on? Chapter eight, the mouse and the muskie. It was a sunny, cold winter day and the O'Briens were ice fishing. Grandpa drilled a hole in the ice. He told Riley, now we wait. The muskie is the biggest fish and everybody wants to catch one. Just then the pup watched the old man yank a giant fish out the hole. It slapped its tail and it wiggled on the ice. It was trying to get away. <gasps> what a beauty, shouted Mimi. But very gently, the pup nosed the helpless creature back into the hole. Oh, for Pete's sake, Riley, why'd you do that? Grandpa said angrily, that was a muskie. You won't go fishing with me again. But the pup looked ahead and spotted a tiny brown mouse. Oh, nothing is more fun than a good mouse chase. He thought the race was on. Riley chased that mouse across the lake and under a dock where the ice was paper thin. The mouse made it through, but Riley, crack, splash, down, 
Down he sank into the black, ice-cold water. He paddled to the top and he grabbed the edge, but snap, it broke again. It bubbled, bubbled underwater. Help, somebody please, somebody please help me. Bump, bump, and bump. Something pushed him from behind. He turned around and he saw Musky. At the same time, he felt a big tug on his yellow scarf. Up, up, and up he went. Big hands lifted his shivering body out of the water. <coughs> Spit. He looked up and in front of him, he saw a tall man. And on his head, sure enough, was a raccoon cap. The man smiled and said, I hope you like your yellow scarf now. The rally continued to stare at him. Please remember what I did for you, he told him, so you can do the same for others. And with a nod, the tall man and his raccoon cat disappeared from sight. And here's how Rally fell through the ice. And right there, if you can see, is Musky helping him. Chapter nine, Miss Quill and the Wolf. A few days after the pup fell through the ice, the phone rang and Mimi answered it. Mimi, the bear lady sounded, I just saw a huge wolf. He's headed your way, be careful. Mimi told Grandpa about the wolf. When Riley heard this, he took off to the woods to tell his friend, Miss Quill, Miss Quill, he yelled, where are you? Over here. Hidden in a hollow log sat Miss Quill with her tiny porky pets. What happened to you? Well, a hungry wolf stole all our food. Oh, I want to help you said Riley. The pup dashed to the shack where Grandpa kept a bucket of fish bait. Soon he returned and knocked over the pail and the porkies stuffed themselves until their bellies were round. The pup reported, you know, Wolf is still looking for food, so you need to hide. No, no, Miss Quill insisted. I'm gonna tell Wolf that I don't like what he's doing, and I want him to stop. Well, the dog with the yellow scarf had to think about that. It was getting dark when Riley got home. Grandpa put on his jacket and stuffed a whistle in his pocket. The pup loved to walk, and soon they were on the road. <gasps> P.U. A stinky, sour smell made Grandpa wrinkle his nose. To his dismay, he saw a dark shape starting out of the woods just ahead. Oh no, groaned the old man. Could this be the wolf the bear lady called us about? He reached for his whistle, blew as hard as he could. Grandpa shook with fear. Oh no, M my, my pup won't stand a chance with that wolf. Now the two animals faced each other. Wolf's eyes gleamed like two bright flames. Foam bubbled around his jaw. Grandpa blasted the whistle again, but the wolf did not move. Well, 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 look who's here, growled the wolf. If it isn't Smiley Riley, the sweet potato boy, hand over that scarf now or get ready to die. Wolf crouched low to begin his attack. Riley was scared silly, but like a flash of lightning, the pup felt courage moving around his body. No, I won't let my fear stop me, he thought. He looked at Wolf and he said, now you listen up and you listen good. Tell your friends I'm tired of the way they talk about me. And then he remembered Miss Quill. I don't like what you're doing and I want you to stop. He added, 
Do you have a problem with that? Wolf stared coldly at the pup. Clearly, he had heard every word. Why? Why, sure, I, I, I guess if, if you feel that way about it, he stammered. Then Wolf tucked his tail between his legs and slinked back into the woods. Grandpa knelt down and hugged Riley. I thought you were a goner. <laughs> so did I, the pup thought. So did I. Chapter 10, A Party on the Farm. First, you want to see this picture. There's the wolf and Riley. Pretty scary stuff. That night, Mimi and the bear lady met at the farm. They sat on logs around the crackling campfire. Soon, the smell of roasted hot dogs and melting chocolate filled the air. The bear lady told Mimi, You know, Mimi, all my life people avoided me because I was different. She smiled and said, But on this island, everyone likes me just the way I am. Well, the day we crashed into your yard was our lucky day. Mimi remembered, You helped us, and you told us all about Benjamin Jones. The bear lady handed her a hot dog oozing with mustard. And now... We are best friends. Grandpa sat down to join them. He was hungry. He noticed a raccoon cap placed on the log next to him. Well, it's good to see you too, Ben. So happy you can be with us tonight. Mimi and the bear lady shared a secret smile. Has anyone seen Riley? Grandpa asked. Both ladies shook their heads. You know, began the old man, when I first saw him, I, I didn't like the way he looked. I thought he was going to be nothing but trouble, big trouble. He continued, the truth is, he's the best thing that had ever happened to us. And while they talked, the dog with the yellow sp scarf swiped a hot dog for Miss Quill because she happens to like them. It was hard to find her in the dark. Shadows stood behind every tree. Psst, I'm over here. It was Miss Quill. Bear grunted as he stepped out from behind a tree. Look here, Smiley Riley. We have something to say you, to you. Oh no, worried pup. Now what did I do? He quickly turned to leave. No, don't go away. Please listen to us. Raccoon stepped forward and one by one, all the forest friends crept into the clearing. We're sorry we were so mean to you, Red Fox apologized. Sleepy Bear yawned. I had to wake up from my winter nap to tell you how badly I feel. He looked so ashamed. I hurt your feelings. Yes, and I've been watching you too, hooted wise old owl. I know you tell the truth because you really do have a red super frisbee. Yeah, yeah, we all saw it, nodded the deer. Oh, we did such a terrible thing, Raccoon admitted. It was wrong to gossip and call you names. Even Timber and Tornado felt sad about what they did. And then Skunk spoke up, because of you, they don't call me Stinky anymore, you know? I really can't help it, he lifted his tail. That's just the way I was made. And now it was Wolf's turn. You showed how important kindness is to all of us. And Miss Quill giggled. Ha ha ha, I'll take that hot dog now. The clouds parted and the moon lit up all the animals. Riley could see them clearly. He could not believe it for tied around the neck of each friend was a scarf, a yellow scarf. Later that night, Mimi and Grandpa tucked a very tired little pup into bed. Although he likes his name, he doesn't mind Smiley Riley or Sweet Potato, and now he never, not ever, wants to be without his yellow scarf. 
and there we have the animals lit up by the moon and they're all wearing the yellow scarf and here he is at the end of the story very happy to make new friends so just remember that you all have the power to change somebody's life by simply the words that you speak. Never underestimate the power of kindness because you can change a bad situation into a good one. I hope you enjoyed my story, The Yellow Scarf.